Twice in the past fortnight, report cards on Australian maths and science students have shown that they are either stagnating or going backwards compared with kids overseas. The worrying result has left governments wondering what went wrong. Any parent can see that the teacher is often the most important element and our next guest is a perfect example. Eddie Wu is the head of mathematics at Cherrybrook High School in Sydney. He's won the New South Wales Premier's Prize for Innovation in Maths. He's also something of a YouTube fanatic where many of his lessons get tens of thousands of views. Let's have a look. According to the quadratic formula, like the quadratic formula has baked into it thirds, right? It has thirds like it's part of the formula. You have to say minus b plus or minus the square root of. If you don't say the square root of, then you won't get the quadratic formula and you won't get the answers. Well, thanks for coming in. It's a pleasure to be here, Henry. So, were you surprised by these results? Why are Australian students struggling in science and maths? The PISA and TIMS results that have come out recently, I didn't view them as particularly surprising, partly because we've seen a trend over many years, and we know that there are lots of areas in mathematics and science learning in particular that we, Australia, have to learn from. So I wasn't particularly surprised. I do think it identified a lot of areas that we need to work on. So does it identify areas of inequity in the system, um, advantaged kids versus disadvantaged kids in different schools, public and private, for example? I think it's always been the case that based on you know, the kind of experience that you've had going all the way through school, um, that's obviously going to have a huge impact on your achievement. And we know that in uh, students in a year eight class, there's going to be a huge range of achievement from the, the most struggling kid to the highest achiever. Sometimes that gap can be up to five years in terms of just academic scores. So we've always identified that and that picture is always complex. but. You know, as a comprehensive school teacher, our role is always to take every single student, no matter where they're at, and to bring them forward. So what about uh, the quality of the teachers as well? A lot of people seem to agree that that is always important, obviously. Are we attracting the best people into the profession at the moment? The quality of the teacher is one of the defining factors of a classroom and it's hard to attract people, particularly in science and mathematics. I remember from when I was going through school, people with those areas of expertise and the ability to communicate, which is so important for a teacher, there are lots of areas in, outside of education where there are enormous opportunities, very lucrative and high status opportunities. So therefore it is difficult and a challenge that we need to work on to attract those people into. So schools. what about you? What was your approach when you were going through? I mean clearly you were very smart and had a lot of options uh, and you have decided to be a teacher to educate children. What led you to that decision and what was also the reaction from others around you when you did it? Mm. The two biggest factors that contributed to me going into teaching were firstly I had some incredible teachers going through school and, and through them I had a first hand experience of the amazing impact a teacher can make. It's quite astonishing how much time that you spend with these teachers every day and the kind of influence that they can have as mentors toward you. I experienced that uh, every day through my schooling and so I thought wow there's an enormous opportunity for, their, for people like me to have a positive influence on the next generation. But secondly, I had the opportunity myself to uh, help other people learn through extracurricular activities at school, leading in cadets or as prefects, peer support leaders, the Christian group. And I just realized that I loved seeing people have that light bulb, aha, sort of snap uh, moment where they understood something they never did before, or gained a new skill, and I love that. Did some people say to you, you want to be a teacher? Why, why would you want to be a teacher in a, in a public school? I think a lot of people thought I was joking at first because it sort of maybe was a bit of a phase that I was going to go through. And there was, there was some shock because, you know, with the skills that um, are important to a mathematician or a scientist and being able to relate well with people, um, there are a lot of different places that I could use that. But for me, you know, the purpose in going to work, making sure that I wasn't just pushing paper around endlessly every day at a desk, that I got to be in front of real people all the time. That was so attractive to me, I couldn't say no. All right, so explain to me, I'm trying to throw myself back to high school and maths obviously wasn't one of my strong points. How do you make a kid interested in learning mathematics? I think mathematics is interesting. It's a bit like music. If you get to experience the music that you love, you, you can't 
tear yourself away from it. But certainly, music can be taught in a way which is which is dry and cerebral and and disinteresting to anyone. And mathematics, I feel, is similar. So. I find that helping students understand, okay, why is this important? How is this used in the real world? And where does it appear in all kinds of surprising ways? Helping students make those connections is one of the most important ways of uh, helping them engage. And also just being interested myself, I think it's really important to take a, an attitude of, of openness and uh, excitement into the classroom because students often can't help but come along with that. And do they come along with it? Do you notice? I mean, generally, if you had to say, how many, how many students in your class really love learning maths? <laughs> I think to be sure, you'd have to ask them. But uh, one of the things that I love most is to walk into a classroom, to greet them with a, with a bounce in my step as I enter for the first lesson of the day, and then just to watch their eyes. I, as a beginning teacher, I remember having to have copious notes in front of me to know what exactly I was going to explain. And as I grew and sort of was able to move away from that, I just love to put my eyes on students and say, okay, are you with me? Are you understanding? Do I need to slow down, clarify? And I can see that moment in their eyes when suddenly it, it, they widen a little bit and they realize, oh no, I'm with you, sir, and an idea clicks for them. So back to the, the original point about Australia's uh, poor performance in this area, you as a teacher, what will you do or can you do to try and turn that around? And on a more broad level, is it even possible? Mm. I definitely think it's possible. I've, I've banked my hope on the fact that it's possible and that's what I'm putting my effort into every day. I'd say there's probably two big things that I personally am doing in the classroom. Number one, it's helping students see that becoming, going into education, taking some of our um, really elite students, people who really could do anything and helping them see actually being in a school is an incredible privilege and opportunity. Helping them understand that from an early stage is really important. Uh, resourcing them and helping them have everything at their uh, fingertips that they need to learn is always a challenge but it's much more possible now than ever before so the resources that I put um, on the internet or to my students online all those kinds of things making sure that students can access them wherever they are at any time is really vital and, and secondly contributing to uh, the wider teaching profession helping other teachers who at the moment we're going through a huge uh, phase shift in terms of new teachers coming in an enormous amount of experience and insight uh, leaving just through retirement and all that kind of thing and making sure that the next generation of teachers is well equipped and, and trained and has a support network those are the kinds of things that, that I'm doing in the classroom. All right, well, I kind of wish I had a maths teacher like you when I was going through high school, but thank you very much for your time today. It's been a pleasure.